My name is William Sa. I'm an interventional cardiologist at the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center. So the Edwards Sapien 3 device, which is the third generation valve from Edwards Life Sciences, was just FDA approved on June 17th uh, last month. So the FDA approval actually came prematurely. It was uh, six months ahead of schedule, or what was expected. And so we don't anticipate that we'll have the valve for the next few months, but hopefully in the next two to three months we'll be able to have it ready for patient care. So Sapien 3 is an exciting new valve because it's the first device that actually has a mechanism in which to uh, prevent paravalvular regurgitation. So unlike the other generation devices, uh, there's an outer skirt, a fabric skirt on the outside of the stent that can actually help reduce paravalvular regurgitation. And we know that paravalvular regurgitation has an impact on mortality in long-term follow-up. So another huge advantage of the Sapien 3 device is that it is a lower profile delivery system. Our current uh, delivery system for a 26 millimeter valve would be a 18 French expandable sheath. And with Sapien 3, the 26 millimeter valve size is able to be delivered through a 14 French expandable sheath. So um, many more patients could be treated from the transfemoral access route. Using a less bulky delivery system definitely will have uh, an improvement in the stroke rates. And that was actually seen in the 30-day outcomes on the Sapien 3 trial, which was uh, uh, presented at the ACC uh, earlier this year. And the stroke rates are well below 3% currently. So in comparison to the core valve uh, system, uh, the Sapien 3 still is a balloon expandable uh, transcatheter heart valve. Um, so the way that the valve is deployed is different. Um, the different sizes, uh, the Sapien 3 will have um, a 20 millimeter size option, uh, whereas Core Valve is, uh, starts at 23 millimeters on the low end. But Core Valve does have a 31 millimeter size on the upper end, and Sapien 3 um, has a 29 millimeter uh, valve size on the upper end. Uh, Core Valve um, just also was able to um, have FDA approval of their next generation device, which is the Evolute R which actually features a fully retrievable and retractable system, um, but it does not have that mechanism to help prevent paravalvular regurgitation like the Sapien 3 valve does. So, um, you know, both valves actually are very good in their performance and their outcomes. Um, we do not have a head-to-head -head trial comparing both devices, and so um, the decision to make uh, between the two devices is difficult, uh, but they are both associated with very good outcomes. Um, I do not know um, what the pricing will be. So, uh, the Sapien 3 trial was actually part of the Partner 2 trial, and the data that was presented at the ACC in the spring of this year um, also reported on 30-day mortality and stroke in the intermediate risk uh, patient population. So these are patients that are surgical candidates but are intermediate risk for mortality. Uh, the intermediate uh, data is actually very encouraging. Uh, the uh, mortality in that group actually is uh, about 1%. Uh, so it's very encouraging that, um, that they have such a low mortality in the surgical, or in the TAVR arm. Um, so th it's, it's yet to be determined whether or not in long-term follow-up that the intermediate risk patients are going to uh, do as well with surgery. Uh, but that's the data that we're all waiting for, and it's going to be exciting.